Hello and welcome everyone to the GitLab Commit. I'm opening up today with teaching the basics about Git and GitLab aimed at anyone who has or wants to teach someone how to use GitLab or is just curious on how to do it. Um, I should be present in the chat right now uh, to provide you with some links here and there and answer any questions that come up in real time. First, a little about me. My name is Foy Murek. My pronouns are they, them. And I used to work as a developer for an open source company called NetWays for three years. And then since last year, I am now a trainer, a speaker for conferences, and a general community person. My social link is here, the Twitter. I will probably link it in the chat right now as well. And um, we have a GitLab training hosted on GitHub, um, which I will share with you soon. Did you ever have a bad training? I mean, sure you did, who didn't? There are a few years in school that are just filled with them. And yeah, there's this kind that puts you to sleep. There's one that leaves you more confused than before, or just plainly goes off topic to the point where it's a complete waste of time. So I want to share some of my experience with you on how to make your teaching methods both entertaining and useful. So we're quickly gonna hop over and see what our training looks like. Not in detail, but here you have the GitHub link, the GitHub repository. The first commit is of course, I um, fixed the typo. And in this open source training, you can find under the releases tab, the PDFs for, um, yeah, each training for the uh, handouts, which are uh, the slides, the exercises that you can go through, and the solutions for the exercises as well. That just as a quick side note, I will share the link to the training if you didn't pick it up um, in the chat, and it will be on my slides at the end of the presentation. So generally, what's on the agenda today? What's up with this training? First of all, I wanna give you a little insight of what people thought and think of me as a trainer in the form of reviews or feedback that I've gotten over the year. Secondly, what I did with my trainings to get to where I am right now. Third, I want to show you a little more in depth what our um, current GitLab training looks like and also what's in there and not just the repository. And lastly, just some MISC stuff that I like doing and would like to share with you. So, feedback. Um, I've been assigned to the GitLab training um, that a colleague wrote um, a bit over a year ago and I have been working on making it better and growing more into it since then. Just as a little bit of background on the training. So my first training got me this feedback. The trainer made a very adept impression, but due to their background, it was very much with a view of a developer. Uh, and feel free to be a bit more self-confident and also say if you don't know something instead of looking at your mentor and being quiet. Yeah, um, beginning is our hard. I was super insecure, but it did get better. So seven months in, a few trainings later, and a lot of confidence building happened in the meantime as well. So very good target oriented training. The trainer conveyed the learning contents very well and efficient. The presentation was a little hasty and hard to follow sometimes. Yeah, so you keep working and improving yourself. And then we got to the most recent trainings. So we switched to online courses about half a year back now and so this most recent training before this recording um, got me this feedback from my trainees. I am completely satisfied with the training. A big thank you to Foy for your great commitment. 
And in my opinion, Foy was the perfect coach. It doesn't get any better than that. I don't really mean to gloat with it. I'm very proud though. So eventually you will get where you want to be. Just keep on practicing and keep on working on yourself. So what did I do over the course of that year so the feedback changed that much? How did I approach my trainings? First of all, know what you want to achieve. Git and GitLab are enormous. There is no way you can teach everything in a day or two or a week. So you need to focus on what your goals are. In my case, I set those three goals that are, first of all, don't leave anyone behind. Second, get the day-to-day -day workflows to be no-brainers. And third, give the tools needed for further self-study. So to summarize it, get everyone to the point where they can start working with the software. If there is a problem, they should know where to look to solve the problem themselves. In order to get there, you need to organize. So you start out with figuring out what the students will need the tool for. I usually do that with an introduction round. What is your previous version control system experience? What's your current role in your company? What are your daily routines? And what do you expect from the training? Um, in my trainings, there are usually a wide variety of people, be it developers or system administrators or project managers that just want to know, you know, what the web interface of GitLab looks like and what I can do with those fancy boards and issues that I can drag around. In order to know what you need to teach, you need to know who you teach. <clears throat> so having that little introduction round lets me go what they will need for a working day. While the training must have a set structure, you can at least adapt your explanations to the workflows of your students a little easier that way. I like starting with a why when, I, when it comes to explanations. So the why would be, you want to see all iterations of your development progress. So you can find errors faster, right? So how do you do that? You start making small commits. You want to kind of start at the beginning, start at, I, I just want to see what happened and iterate from there. And make sure you only introduce one new topic or one new problem at a time. So after teaching about making small commits, you can then later go on to explaining how to squash them together when it's all finished and have a nice result. Don't start with a squashing. Start with, I want to versionize my code slowly. You want to simplify. So before and after training, go and check your curriculum. Check what you want to teach and how. Did I provide all information needed for each step that I explain? Which concepts are to abstract? And how could I visualize those concepts better? What you want is understanding. Understanding is so, so much more useful than just copying commands from left and right. Every now and then, ask a student to explain a concept that you just introduced to them back to you and draw things up. So before we started doing online trainings, I like to use a whiteboard. Nowadays, it's more like having an iPad and a whiteboard app where you can just draw things up. For example, if I want to explain how to make an interactive rebase happen, we're going to start out with the master branch, as one does. Draw up a few commits. So this is hash AB, hash 7.5, and C4. So those are my three commits that I made. And in order to rebase um, interactively and, for example, squash the last two commits together, so those are going to be a single commit, 
you need to choose a new target. So you can say, this is the new target. This is hash AB and you want to base it on it. So you have a current commit, which is the head. And then you have the one before, which is with a one. The one before that is with a two. So in order to go for an interactive rebase, you just go git rebase dash i and then whatever you chose in this case the head two as your new base and you insert it over here see how this makes a lot more sense than just typing it in the console or going to the ui and clicking a few buttons people will actually have understood how the commits work after another So draw things up, find a pen, find a paper, find a whiteboard or an app for it and draw what you want to explain. <clears throat> and then we come to presenting. Um, there will be unexpected questions, but try to view the questions more as an enrichment rather than a scary thing. You'll learn something from them too. And there will be some questions that will be covered later in your explanation. Don't be afraid to say, we will talk about this thing later again. Oftentimes when I start mentioning to that, um, I will work together with a colleague on this singular branch. There will be a lot of rather complex questions about merge conflicts and how to solve them. In that case, I can just say, yeah, this is going to come up later this afternoon or tomorrow. And the person will be happy because their question will be addressed and it is going to be in the curriculum. So it is going to happen eventually and be talked about. You don't need to um, reorder your entire presentation just because someone had a smart question in the beginning. Just push it to later. But there will be times where you don't know an answer either. So it feels a little silly in the beginning, but just go and do the research process together with your students, do it openly. And that will help them to know how to look for an answer themselves in the future. If I don't know something in the training, I just pull up my search engine of my choice, type in whatever I want to know and help them figure it out or go to the man pages and show them how to get here or there depending on the question, of course. Um, so don't be afraid. You can't know everything. You're a human person. And as I said, it's an enormous topic. And it's absolutely fine to be nervous about it as well. It's, it's going to pass 10 minutes in, like right now for me. So the next step is to adapt. So take notes about what fell off about your presentation. If you have a co-trainer or someone helping you, let them write things down for you. Just give them a little sign and they will write down where you were. So, so you can go over your presentation afterwards and correct whatever felt off. Do go over your presentation over and over again anyway. And ask for feedback. And don't just ask for, was it good on a scale from one to six? D did I do okay or not as much? But let the people explain what they liked or what they didn't like. If there are 10 people attending your training, eight will be giving feedback and four of them will actually take the time to write something nice for you. Whether they liked it, what they didn't like and what you could improve on. And you will improve with every single iteration. So now we're getting to where I am with the training right now, the current state of our training. Basically, we have four big topics split over two days. Well, the basics come before lunch on the first day. The getting to work part comes after lunch. The next day starts with a little quiz. And then we go into working together, uh, how to work together well and then i give a little free space which is basically just ticks, uh yeah tricks and tips that i gathered or got together over the years 
help build your own customer setup or just a missed Q and A for people that have leftover questions that didn't get answered over the course. So when I start off with the history of Git, for example, I like talking about the background, where it comes from. So Git comes from the kernel development and how they need to build Git so it would be able to handle a development that is asynchronous with a huge ass code base and the like helps set it all into perspective. Um, having the background knowledge emphasizes the strong points of Git. And you can also just throw a joke in as well. For example, that Linus is a little narcissist and named Git after himself. The joke being that Git is a British slang word for an unpleasant person. Um, so we are going over the technical bits. We are going over the history, over the background starting with the ideas, going to the basic commands, going to the technical collaboration bit, and then how to do the collaboration the right way. Um, and I try to always show all aspects of my um, curriculum, but depending on the audience, I can focus on what's important to them. Back to the little introduction round we had in the beginning. And then I like giving them a space to get the most out of having a real trainer opposed to just reading a guide, being able to ask any questions at any point, And then in the end, have me help them out with their little problems and things they've experienced. <clears throat> so tips and tricks. I skipped that slide there. So last but not least, there are some, pick, uh, yeah, just some general things that I picked up over time. And that would be, I use a lot of analogies and a lot of imagery. I try to explain foreign concept through known ones. Um, with that, I try to wire connections in the brain in a way. And with the easy language that I use, I help myself and help my students to clear up any misconceptions they might have. So <clears throat> an analogy that I really like using is the desk analogy. I have a desk in front of me and there are two folders on that desk. The red one is the main branch, the master branch where I work on and do my stuff. And then when I switch branches to a new one, I close that folder, put it aside, and pull up the blue folder. I open it and then I'm on a new branch. It's an entirely different system. It's a new folder with new documents in there and I can write and do my stuff there. And if I wanna go back, I close the blue folder, put it aside, pull the right one up and continue working in the master branch. So this way, when a connection is made, you can return to it. People will associate switching branches with switching folders around. Storytelling and explaining facts is very important as well. There's nothing without context. Explain in which situations in your work life you made certain mistakes. Make the connections. Tell them about the countless times you were too lazy to write a good commit message and then later it came around and bit you in the bum. And connect common situations with commands. If they want to get up and leave for home, make the connection for them to make a commit beforehand. Make them do it every single time before they take a coffee break. And eventually they will associate getting up and leaving with, oh, I got to make a commit first. And that way you will just help them integrate it into their workflow that they save and back up the work before they go off on their holiday for three weeks and leave the colleagues with nothing. And keep a theme going. So if you start a story about baking, keep the baking theme going. And if you'd rather talk about desks and folders, stick with that. So I have for one, the branch switching analogy with my desks. 
But I also try to explain my commits with that specific folder analogy. So you have that one folder and there's a document in there that is your working area. And if you shut it, it's in the staging area. This is, this is what you've prepared that you can put a sticker on it, close it, fix it, and put it on a stack with all of the others. That is your commit in the commit history of, um, yeah, of stacks. <clears throat> Coming to examples and application. Practical applications make theory work. You can help people avoid your own mistakes and be human. We all grow in stages and you will have uh, errors in your ways. So go by talking about your workflows, your day-to-day -day tasks. The people are there to listen to you and it's to their benefit that you are there and telling you them about it. Else they could just read a guide online. So say what you do, make dumb jokes, wear silly shirts. I personally really love this shirt that I'm wearing right now. And I wear it on every second day of my trainings. And just be yourself. Um, teach them in a way that they can work, remember your training and work with what you gave them. And for us, uh, there is a sandboxing model in a way. So trainees have their own separate machine for the entire training. As we are a hosting department as well, we web host a little CentOS machine with a Tmux shell that they can just access from the browser. This makes it so that they can just experiment freely. Uh, they will be a lot less afraid of botching commands as it's just a throwaway machine and not their private computer that they could actually damage. And as they are less afraid of making mistakes, they will make more and this will help them remember the solution to them better. If you botched a command yourself, you will be a lot um, more prone to remembering how to fix it than if you just saw someone else make it. Plus, you as the trainer see the most common mistakes people make and you can add preventive uh, explanations to your curriculum and just have the mindset of this is a common mistake that people make, this is what I can help them figure their stuff out about. So that was it. Um, I have the link here on the slide for the people that watch later and for the people that have been here live. I will probably have put the link in the chat by now so you can look through your slides yourself. Um, as I have already shared with you earlier today, in the releases you can find exercises, solutions to the exercises and the handouts themselves. On that note, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful rest of the event, and you can find me in the chat right now uh, to ask me any questions you have. Thank you very much for listening and tuning in. Mm -hmm.